be next year, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Allah gave me another chance to come. So I'm very thankful for that. You know, one of my favorite hadith, I don't know if you can say favorite, is if you're allowed to say favorite, but a statement of the Prophet that really sticks out in my heart. Anytime I hear it, subhanAllah, it just gives me shivers. Is when the Prophet وسلم, was sitting amongst his companions. And he said to his companions, I wish to see my brothers. And the companions who were a little bit confused, they say, Ya Rasulullah, are we not your brothers? And the Prophet ﷺ said, no, you are my companions. My brothers are those people who will come much later on. They have not seen me, but they still believe in me. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet والسلام, he's referring to us, inshallah, as his brothers. And of course, his sisters as his sisters. But does it ever make you think that this man who was so revered, alayhi salatu wasalam, he actually cared and thought about you and I? This man who lived a thousand plus years ago, he thought about a day when you and I would walk upon this earth and he wished nothing but good for us. He in his lifetime, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he struggled. He had assassination attempts against his life. He watched his children die. He watched his friends be killed. So that this message could enter inside of our hearts in this day and age in 2017. Allahu Akbar. Do you realize the sacrifice that was made to bring this message to you? That people in the past, subhanAllah, talab al -im, students of knowledge would travel for days and weeks and months to meet one teacher to take one hadith. And today we just ask Shaykh Google, Shaykh Google, is this haram? Yes. Oh, okay, alhamdulillah, there you go. Bismillah. And this knowledge has been made so easy for us. And attaining this understanding has become something that is very, very easy. Just with a mobile phone in your hand, you can access so many different statements, so many different hadith, Quran, everything. And this man, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wallahi, he was a fantastic individual. He was a man sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who cared about those people who had very little rights in society. Before the United States and other countries, they outlawed and banned slavery and they started giving rights to people that were weak, the Prophet ﷺ, he cared about those individuals whose society looked down upon. He gave rights to women at a time when the rest of the world used to kill them and bury them. He gave rights to the weak, the slave, the traveler, the individual who among society would be looked at as very weak. This message that he came with is something that unless we studied the entire of history and human civilization, we wouldn't necessarily appreciate. But you know, it is from my own meek understanding that wallahi, sometimes I wish I could have met the Prophet And some of us, we say that, right? We say, oh, I wish I was around during the time of the Prophet Yeah, you wish, but who knows? Maybe you would have been Abu Jahl. Maybe you would have been fighting against the Muslims. Right? You don't know. How difficult was it to be a believer at that time? Which side would you have even been on to begin with? So there's a reason why we're here and there's a reason why they were then. But still, I wish, I wish that if I had the chance to meet the Prophet ﷺ, imagine the Prophet ﷺ, he lived in 2017. How different do you think society would be? Let me ask you this. What type of car do you think the Prophet ﷺ would drive? What do you think? Ferrari? MashaAllah. Going everywhere fast, MashaAllah. What do you think? You think he just would have walked, huh? I don't think so. Do you think the Prophet ﷺ would have had Facebook? Sa'udhu billah, what is face kitab? What is that? I never heard of that, brother. What do you think? Do you think the Prophet ﷺ would have had Snapchat and social media and these things? What do you think? You guys became silent today. What's going on? You didn't have breakfast? I mean, the Prophet ﷺ utilized the media of his day. He used, you know, all the technology available to him at that time. Who knows? Maybe he would have had an Instagram account. Why not? How would the world have viewed him today? Because at that time, his message was so unique, so powerful, they wanted to kill him. When he spoke about giving rights to women, people said, how could he even say such a thing? 
when he talked about allowing a black man, Bilal radiallahu anhu, to take his place on top of the Kaaba, the Quraysh at that time would have slit their own throats to see an image like that. How disgusted they were. But the Prophet sallallahu he was a forward thinker. He thought about these things ahead of everyone's time. So it is, you know, something that I always think about, something that I wish I could have the opportunity to. Of course, in not this life, but in the next life, inshallah, and all of us to meet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I would ask him questions. I would ask him, you know, just a anything I could. But I want to share this poem with you that I wrote, inshallah. Because I think that in order for us to truly understand and appreciate the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have to really connect with him. And many of us, we cannot connect with him because we think of his life as such a foreign thing. It happened so many hundred thousand years ago. People at that time were very different. It's difficult for us to really put ourselves in his shoes, alayhi salatu wasalam. So I wrote this poem, inshallah. You won't find it online or anywhere. It's a, a brand new poem. I never really shared it before. But because you're all African people, you're my people, inshallah. I'm going to hook you up, all right? This poem is called Prophet Amongst Us. If you're not careful, the media will have you hating the people who are oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppressing. The fact that Islam gets so much press today is like a curse and a blessing. A blessing because nobody can say on the day of judgment that they didn't hear this message and a curse because we were the ones who were supposed to be delivering it to the masses. And here we are, trying to sell God to a world that is godless, content with chasing the pursuit of happiness in arms instead, burying little baby girls in these shallow graves of Instagram fame, selling breasts and thighs like KFC, we have lost all shame. Today, you cannot even call immorality by name. The idols of yesterday have been replaced by the American idols of today, and we can comfortably say, that tribalism and racism are here to stay. A black man is still considered less than a white man on any given day in every single way. We have lost our way, gone astray with so many freedoms, yet we are locked in a cage. For this dunya has no friends, only one night stands and we keep getting screwed, chasing mirages in the sand and there is no way out, no control, alt, delete, no disconnecting from this matrix. It is stuck on repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. No more books of guidance, no more messengers to meet, no more wahi from the skies. Our connection is so weak and we've been given every Everything that we need to be convinced, but it's so hard to fight ignorance when Abu Jahl still exists because I'm tired of feeling different, tired of apologizing for what I didn't do, tired of trying to explain the truth to buffoons who just want to tie me in a noose. I'm tired of feeling tired, knowing that I could be doing so much more. But I'm a coward and a sinner and I don't even know if I deserve to even really have my last name. Trying to uphold the principles of a man whom the angels praised and sometimes I wonder if my prophet were alive today, I wonder if this world would be the exact same way. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah send him blessings and peace. Because if our prophet had a passport, I wonder what would be his nationality. Would he be a Saudi? Would they call him a Wahhabi? Would he enjoy the luxuries of all these royal families? The man who used to sleep on a bed of palm leaves, would he live inside a mansion with servants at his feet? And I wonder what would be his stance on foreign policy? Could he eat knowing how many children die from poverty and invading armies, dropping bombs indiscriminately, harming innocent moms, killing for fun, the man who taught us that this ummah was one? Would he educate and eradicate ignorance with his tongue or pick up a gun to anyone who said that God was not one? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But tell me, how could that be? 
The man who was sent as Rahmatan lil alameen and he couldn't even read, not alif, lam, or meme, but yet he would change the hearts of a generation. And everyone that would proceed taught us that every life was sacred and to have respect for humanity because we were all created from a single clot and seed. And I could see him at the UN addressing all the other nations, warning them of global warming and religious innovation. CNN would ask for an interview. His words would be short and sweet, but they would still find ways to misinterpret and demonize him on TV. Oh, he must be crazy or suffering from some kind of insanity to think the rich shouldn't oppress the poor or take advantage of the weak. And what do you mean when you say that all men are the same except in piety? This is blasphemy. We've been living this way for so many centuries. They would charge Abu Bakr as an accomplice. Uthman would be entrapped, put Umar in solitary confinement and give Ali accessory after the fact. Khalid bin Walid would be labeled a menace to society and Bilal's face would be on the front of every Black Lives Matter tea. I I pray for humanity because we are pray for humanity in the past they killed prophets took Yahya's head off with a sword now they kill for prophets justifying their unholy wars spreading blood like gospel now more than ever before it feels like we need a prophet to guide us through the eye of the storm but if we did I would request on Facebook to be his friend or send a DM on Instagram just to say, hey, I'm a big fan. You may not know me, but I've read all about you and you really helped me change my life and I don't know how to thank you. And even though I never met you, I still believe in you. I'm a follower of you and I follow you on Twitter too. And maybe one day, when I grow up, I want to be just like you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah reunite us all with you. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you very much. How much time do I have left? You know, how much time? Done? Okay, khalas. I'll finish here, inshallah. Thank you very much. It's been an honor to be here. I hope, I hope, I hope, inshallah, we have a surprise maybe later on in the evening. Um, I'm going to put some pressure on the brothers because uh, some of you may know I have a film that I created um, called Tug of War. Uh, some of you heard about it? Okay. And I'm trying to convince the brothers here. It's, maybe we can do a screening tonight. Maybe, inshallah. Maybe. But they're probably going to say no, so I don't know. Uh, am I hyping them up for no reason? But hopefully, inshallah, maybe we can do a screening. We're supposed to have one uh, on Monday, but... Because of the, uh, the, you know, the holiday weekend, everything is shut down. So hopefully, maybe, inshallah, if we're able to, we can do a screening before I leave. Otherwise, I'll be again here tomorrow. Barakallahu feekum. Zakallahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.